city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Smoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. Treatment, soldier. Huh? I had nothing to do with it, Marshal. What? He was drunk. And you're cold sober. Of course I am. It's true, Matt. He just came in looking for him on the floor there, Gallagher. I'll take your gun, soldier. But well, you can't do this, Marshal. All right, now pick up your friend. We're going to Matt, jail. Matt, listen to me. Gallagher started it. He was only trying to get him out of here. Back to the fort. He can take him back tomorrow. Fighting's against the law and dodge. No, Matt. Come on, let's get going, soldier. Pick him up. <laughs> Last week, we'd had nothing but trouble in Dodge. Men had fought and gouged and knifed and shot each other, and I began to wonder if they gave a thought to anything else in the world. It had set my temper on edge, and I suppose I'd become as bullheaded as they were. Anyway, I threw the soldiers in jail and went off to supper and forgot about them. For some reason, the town was reasonably peaceful that night. The change sort of took the edge off of me. Next morning, I felt half human for the first time in days. I turned that cowboy loose early, Mr. Dillon. He seemed tolerably repentant. Well, he should be, Chester. But those two soldiers look pretty glum. What are you going to do with them? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you better go back and let them out, huh, Chester? We'll have the army in here looking for them if we don't. Yes, sir. You've done your time, man. The law has forgiven you. Out you go, free as a little bird. Oh. Oh, that sunlight will blind me this morning. We ain't about done our time, mister. In real trouble now. Mm. Oh, why do you say that? Because it's true. We were sent to Dodge to pick up supplies, not to go to jail. Now, you're not the first soldiers who camped here overnight. Colonel Doby's a just man. Captain Shaw's in command right now, Marshal. Colonel went to St. Louis for a time. Well, I don't know, Captain Shaw, but I'm sure... He's just about as reasonable as you are, Marshal. Just about. Uh, You're a spear, aren't you? And I was as sober yesterday, remember? I locked you up for fighting, not drinking. You locked us up. That's all that matters now. 
Shakespeare's right, Marshal. I guess I deserve what I'm going to get, but Spear don't. Well, nobody was killed. You're not going to hang. You don't know Captain Shaw. He can be awful hard. A little extra duty won't hurt you. First off, we'll be fined ten dollars by court martial. One month's pay. Well, that's a little high. I agree. You must know what the cat might do on top of it. He's old army. They say one time he gave a man ten days' provisions and had him drummed out of camp with a straw halter around his neck and his coat turned inside out. And that was Indian country, Marshal, not around here. Well, the man's a scoundrel. That's what he is. Say, how'd the fellow make out anyway? You'll have to ask Captain Shaw about that. If he knows. Well, the man must have done more than get drunk and fight. You won't get that kind of punishment. No, it was close to it. Captain's dead set against liquor. Not a man in the company's been allowed to drop since Colonel Dopey left. Is that so? Sure is. Look, Marshal, I got it coming, but Spear here, all he's done was try to get me back to the fort. You... You gotta try to do something about Never it. Never mind, Gallagher. He won't do nothing. Spear, I guess I was a little hasty locking you up. I, uh, I'm sorry about it. So am I. All right. What can I do? Ride out and explain it to Captain Shaw. I don't like interfering in army matters. But, uh,. All right, I'll do it. You will? Yeah, but I can't today. <laughs> well, tomorrow won't be too late. I'll be out there tomorrow afternoon. I don't know whether to trust you or not, Marshal. You'll have to find out if you can, Mr. Spear. Yeah. You can't blame me much, Marshal. I sure hope you do it. All right, boys, you're late enough now. You better get going. Come on, Spear. While you're talking to Captain Shaw, I think I'll go see the sutler, Mr. Dillon. He's an old friend of mine. All right, Chester. Name's Larson. Been selling goods to soldiers for ten years that I know of. Say, I'll eat with him, too, in case you should get asked to supper. Oh, fine, fine. Hey, doesn't that look like Spear there? Where? Just outside the fort there, the man with the shovel. Oh. Yeah. Say, what's he digging anyway? Come on, let's ride over there. Right. Hello, Spear. You're too late, Marshal. Why? What's happened? We've already been tried, that's what. Well, what'd they give you? Two months pay and a month punishment. What punishment? I don't know, Marshal. The captain will work on that from day to day. He's got lots of ideas. Is this one of them? Digging that hole out here? It isn't exactly a hole, mister. It's a grave. A grave? Whose grave? Mine. Oh, now, wait a minute, Spear. Well, it's for me or somebody like me. That's what he said. Ask him about. There comes the guard. i got to keep busy. All right, I'll talk to you later, Spear. I won't be hard to find. <laughs> That's the whole story, Captain. I locked Spear up, too, and for no justifiable reason at all. He was fighting, wasn't he, Marshal? He was trying to get Gallagher out of there, that's all. I have already decided Gallagher's punishment will be the more severe. Yeah, but Spear doesn't deserve any punishment at all. Don't you see that? If I may ask, Marshal, what is your interest in this case? Look, I made a mistake, Captain. If I hadn't thrown Spear in jail, he'd be all right now. The man's been done an injustice. Not exactly. It would have been an hour late in any case. What? He and Gallagher had orders to report here to Lieutenant Adams at 6 o'clock. But at 6 o'clock, they were arrested in Dodge. If they had not been arrested, it would have taken them an hour to ride to the fort. Therefore, they would have reported in at 7 o'clock, one hour late. Oh, but Captain Spear spent that hour trying to find Gallagher. A soldier must learn to take care of himself, Marshal. 
Evidently, Spear hasn't learned. So it's my duty to teach it. Now, this just doesn't make sense. I am a soldier, Marshal. You are a civilian. I wouldn't expect you to understand. Anybody can understand what's just. The Army has its own justice, Marshal. Like making a man dig his own grave? Oh, you're sorry. Of course. Gallagher's digging one behind the fort. Why? Sentimental reasons, I suppose. Of mine, to be sure. What does that mean? It goes back a long way, Marshal. You see, I served under General Winfield Scott at Veracruz in 47. And I remember an order he once sent down. And it concerned soldiers who'd been found drunk. Now don't tell me General Scott had them shot. No. His idea was to impress upon the command that such a grave would be wanted sooner or later. Either for the drunken man or for some drunken companion. And did the soldiers understand that? Soldiers understand orders, Marshal. Or they can be made to. Tell me, Captain, what do you think Colonel Doby would do about this? In Colonel Doby's absence, I am in command of this company. Then Spear will be punished even though he's innocent, huh? This is an army matter, Marshal. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, Marshal. Marshal Dillon. Huh? Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Adams. Oh, how do you do, Lieutenant? I'm the officer Spear and Gallagher were to report to night before last. Oh, yeah, yeah, the captain mentioned that. Uh, tell me, how'd you make out in there? Uh, well, I don't think Captain Shaw and I understand each other completely. I knew it was hopeless. Thanks for trying, Marshal. Tell me something, Lieutenant. What's the matter with Captain Shaw? I couldn't say, Marshal. But he's been 30 years in the Army. So? Colonel Doby's been intense. Oh, I see. Will you join us at mess, Marshal? We'll eat in about ten minutes. Oh, thank you very much. I'd like to, if you don't mind. Sorry I can't offer you a drink. Captain's order. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, well, Lieutenant, when does Colonel Doby get back from St. Louis? We haven't heard. Soon, I hope. Yeah. You see, Gallagher can take it. He knows he's guilty, for one thing. It's fear I'm worried about. Already, he's not the same man he was. Yeah, I suppose he's lost faith in people. He was always a fine soldier. I just hope he can hang on long enough. No? Long enough for what? Oh, let's say long enough for Colonel Doby to get back before Captain Shaw drives here to something like... Yeah. Come along, Marshal. We'll wash up. <laughs> return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, this Monday night, here's CBS Radio Suspense, starring Herbert Marshall in The Man Within by Graham Greene. Also Monday night on most of these same stations, the Lux Radio Theater presents Betty Hutton and Gene Berry in a delightful musical comedy, Somebody Loves Me. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. <laughs> pretty busy the next few days, and there wasn't much time to think about Spear. But when I did think about him, I got to wishing I'd never let myself be hired for this job. Nearly a week passed, and then one day, about noon, I went to their office and found Kitty waiting there with Chester. I told you you'd be along any minute, Mr. Dillon. It's nothing serious, I hope, Kitty. Well, it could be, Matt. She wouldn't tell me a word about it. I offered to help, but no, she said. Uh, She'd wait until uh, you right, got here, uh, and then... All right, sir. Well, Kitty. Now, uh, this morning, about 8 o'clock at was. Oh, I was... Wait a minute. Hmm? Uh, Lieutenant Adams. Hello, Marshal. Chester. Hello, Lieutenant. Uh, this is Miss Kitty, Lieutenant. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. I didn't recognize you, Miss Kitty. I mean, uh... uh... That's all right, Lieutenant. I'll be brief, Marshal. It's about Spear. He's deserted. What? Last night. 
Just the fort now. How'd you get away? Well, Captain Shaw hasn't had those men guarded very close. They're still digging graves, and with only one guard for the two of them. Spear took off when the guard was at the back of the fort near Gallagher. You so? What, have they found him yet? No. But the captain has the whole company out after him. I just posted a couple of men at the depot. Most everyone else is staying out over the prairie, horseback. You think maybe the captain wanted him to run off with her? Maybe that's why he made it so easy, huh? A lieutenant doesn't judge his captain, Marshal. But I'm worried about Spear. He might do anything now. Yeah. I knew you'd be interested, so I just dropped by to let you know what's happened. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant. There's something else, Marshal. What? Captain Shaw has ordered me to search the town. Oh? He's sending me two more men. I hope you won't object. Well, ordinarily I would, but uh, I understand. Thank you, Marshal. Goodbye, Miss Kitty. Goodbye. Just this bar, Lieutenant. Matt, that's what I came to tell you about. Spear is hiding in my room. What? Since when? This morning he showed up about 8 o'clock. Said he has to hide during the day. He promised to leave tonight. So why did he come to you? Well, he remembered I tried to keep him from being arrested that day, and he said I was the only person he could trust. Oh, I see. I don't know what to do, Matt. With the arm, Kitty. Yeah. Yes, he's on. He said if anyone but me tried to get in the room, he'd kill him. He's also desperate, Matt. He's got to turn himself in, Kitty. After the way he's been treated... He'll catch him anyway, sooner or later. He's got to face this thing on his own free will. If he doesn't, it'll... It'll ruin him inside. He won't be any good again. You understand what I mean? No. I think I do. All right, then go tell him. I can't, Matt. I'm not a man. He wouldn't listen to me. All right, I'll go. You can't. He'll shoot you as soon as you open that door. Well, uh, look, you'll have to help us trick him, Kitty. No, please, Matt. He trusts me. You want to help him, don't you? Yeah. All right. Chester, go out and buy a big bag of groceries and hurry. Groceries? Yes, Miss Dean. We'll wait for you here. <laughs> Just shoot me, Marshal, and have it over with. Sure, you've got a bad deal all around, but the trouble you're in right now is your own doing. You're the one who put me in jail. I'm talking about your deserting. For what about it? I'm just telling you, you're responsible for that yourself. And you're the only one who can square it. Give yourself up. Give myself up? You mean you're not taking me? I got nothing to do with it. This is between you and the Army. Please, dear, do it. He's right. You mean I can... You mean I can walk out of here right now? And you won't stop me? That's right. Why are you doing this, Mark? Spear, I've been told that you're a good soldier. But right now you're in trouble. And you and I are both responsible for it. I shouldn't have thrown you in jail and you shouldn't have deserted. Well, so? I'll do my part and I think you'll do yours. You'll do yours by turning yourself in. I don't know, Marshal. Yeah, what, Chester? Down there in the street. Lieutenant Adams and two soldiers, and they're headed right in here. Give myself up, huh? 
We got it planned pretty neat, Marshal. Maybe the army will give you a reward for this, huh? Maybe they'll Adam said he was going to search the town. That's all I know about. And followed you right here, didn't he? You sure trust me. All right, shut up a minute. Uh, Kitty, is that a closet there? Is it empty? No, well, almost, yeah. All right, Spear, I'll prove that I trust you. They won't find you till you're ready to give yourself up. Now get in that closet and hurry. You mean it? Here, take my gun with you. Now do you think I mean it? Your gun? Go on, take it. Oh, but I I didn't mean... All right, hurry up, get in here. Mr. Dillon, are you sure you ought to take a chance like that? Open the door, Kitty. <laughs> Come in, Lieutenant. Wait here, ma'am. Yes. Well, hello, Marshal. How are you, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Hello. Sorry to bother you this way, Miss Kitty. You were searching the town for spear, like I told you. Yeah, well, I know, but how'd you get here so fast, Lieutenant? Just a hunch. Yes, it was a bad one. It sure was. This kid had never hide a fugitive of any kind in this world, no matter Chester. what he might have done. Chester. Yes, sir. I hope you'll excuse me for bothering you, Miss Kitty. Oh, that's all right, Lieutenant. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. So long. All right, Spear, they've gone. You can come out now. Here's your gun, Marshal. Thank you. We'll leave you here, and I'll send Lieutenant Adams back alone. That is, if you've decided. Okay, Marshal. Oh, that's fine. You're doing the right thing, Steve. Chester, give him his gun. Yes, sir. Here you are. Thanks. Come on, Kitty. Chester. The Marshal. Yeah? I'll be all right now, Marshal. No matter what, that captain thinks of. Sure you will, Spear. Good luck to you. Thanks, Marshal. I thank you. There's Lieutenant Adams right across the street, Mr. Dillon. Uh, you and Kitty go on into the Texas Trail, huh? I'll join you later. All right, sir. Carry back, Matt. Yeah. Lieutenant. Lieutenant Adams. Yes, Marshal. Where are your men? Oh, they're scouting the Alapaganza there. I don't think you'll find them, though. You don't? No, I don't. I see you got your gun back, Marshal. You don't miss much, do you? I kind of wondered at first why you didn't have it upstairs, eh? And? Well, I don't suppose Captain Shaw would much appreciate an officer who searched a room. Didn't even bother with the closet, would he? Uh, Captain Shaw might not, Lieutenant, but I think Spear will. You waiting for me, Marshal? Mm-hmm. It was a mighty long chance you took. That was worth it. <laughs> Let me know how he makes out, Lieutenant. You sure will, Marshal. Especially seeing as how you kind of got a stake in him now. Yes? So long. Goodbye, Lieutenant. <laughs> treated rough for the next few days, but that he took it fine. And then Colonel Doby returned to his command, and he decided that Spear had been punished enough. Two weeks later, Lieutenant Adams, accompanied only by Spear, was ordered on a scouting mission down toward the Cimarron. It may have been Indians, or it may have been the river, but neither man was seen or heard of again. Yesterday, I received a message from Colonel Doby. A formation is to be held at Fort Dodge, honoring those two good soldiers. The colonel thought I might want to be there. Smoke.
Cloak, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Paul Freeze, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. <laughs> CBS Radio now brings you a full hour of fun and melody with Arthur Godfrey and all the little Godfreys. It's 60 minutes of the best features from Arthur's shows heard during the week. Remember Arthur Godfrey, Frank Parker, Jeanette Davis, Holly Loki, the Mariners, Judith LaRosa, and all the rest of the gang are yours on most of these stations for a full Sunday hour, presented by CBS Radio tomorrow. George Walt speaking, and remember, Amos and Andy are here every Sunday on the CBS Radio Network.